So Joe, in a previous video presentation, we took a Type 2 surge protection device mm -hmm. and we opened it up and had a look inside it. What yeah. did we find when we looked at it? So we opened up the line to earth connection and the neutral earth connection inside these surge protection devices. Uh, inside the line to earth one, we found a Varista. We and did. inside the neutral to earth one, we found a slightly different type of technology, the gas discharge tube. Okay, and we know that they are affected by changes in voltages, because mm -hmm. we're talking about transient voltages. Yep. And we're going to try with a multifunction tester mm -hmm. to increase the voltage pass through and see if we can get them to change their resistance. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what we should see is that when we're at uh, roughly the equivalent voltage of nominal voltage, yep. we should find that there is a very, very high resistance across both these devices. And once we go beyond that, we'll start to see if we are getting a lower resistance, which is what these are effectively designed to do. And we can move it up from 250 to 500 yep. to 1,000 volts. Yep. We know they're DC. Yep. Okay, so we've been talking about being resistance, yep. and we know in, in real terms it's actually impedance, impedance because yeah. obviously when AC comes through. Yep. I think if we bring the camera in, we'll have a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay then, Joe, so the camera's been brought in. Can you just remind us what we've got placed in front of us here? Yeah, of course. So here we've got the various elements of our surge protection device, and it's been broken down into uh, its elements as far as we can go without completely destroying it. So what we've got here, is we've got the surge protection device that sits between the line and the earth connection and here we've got the surge protection device that sits between the neutral and the earth connection. So the bottom one being a varista is that correct Joe? That's correct yeah so there we've got our varista and again in a previous video we explained sort of how that works and at the top we've got the gas discharge tube so the two slightly different types of technology there. So Joe we know these are meant to react when a voltage surge occurs. So we're talking about a nominal value of voltage in the UK in a domestic dwelling of 230. Mm -hmm. But I think if we use the multifunctional tester, we can pass 250 volts DC, 500 yeah. volts and 1000 volts and see if we can get them to react. In other words, change their opposition to current flow. Yeah, absolutely. Now, again, at this point, let's just re-emphasize the point. We're not doing this to, don't get mixed up with thinking this is anything to do with DC flowing in RCDs in AC circuits. It's nothing to do with that. We're simply using the uh, multifunction tester here as a power source, as a way of generating voltages that are above the normal voltage that this type of device could be expected to uh, experience. So Joe, if we start off by passing 250 volts DC through our varista, we should see it oppose that voltage, shouldn't we? We shouldn't see yeah. a, a circuit be created. Absolutely. Should so we we'll, attempt to do that? We'll try that, yeah. Let's, let's focus on the, the varista for starters. So I'm just going to hook this up uh, with my crocodile clips here, because even though uh, the voltage coming out of here won't do me any significant harm, it certainly uh, could Thing, so we don't want that to happen. So we'll set that to 250 volts. We've got a contact across our uh, varista there. And now when I apply 250 volts to this varista, as you say, we should get a very, very high resistance will be shown across here. So let's check that out. So you can see there, we've got a very, very high resistance indeed, greater than a million ohms. So effectively, there is no connection between those two terminals, which is what we'd want. So what we'll do now is change the applied voltage. We're going to change this up to 500 volts. So now we're applying a higher voltage than this device would normally be uh, exposed to. So let's see what happens with our surge protection device now. Oh, that is a change. Right. So you can see there now that the resistance effectively of that barista, we've put a higher voltage onto it and now we've got a reduced resistance. So now we're down at uh, 0.44 of a mega ohm, so uh, somewhere around 440,000 ohms is the resistance of that device now. So it clearly demonstrates when the voltage is increased, the resistance, in this case, of the uh, device has actually greatly changed. Absolutely. Dare we risk a thousand? Well, let's do it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take it past its, uh, its operational life. So let's have a look at this now. So we're up to a thousand volts. Let's apply that there. Now, the tester is beeping because it worries when you apply a thousand volts. So you can see we're still getting that uh, reduced value. And I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but you can actually hear, I don't know if that's inside the varista, but you can actually hear a little bit of a squeaking noise there. It's, it's kind of, you can almost hear the, uh, the resistance breaking down in there, which is quite interesting. So that clearly demonstrates the point, doesn't it? Yeah. As we change the voltage, 
we actually change the opposition Absolutely. to current flow of the actual varistor. Yeah. And just for the sake of argument, drop that back down to 250 volts. In theory, we've not actually tried this on, on screen yet, no. so we'll see what happens. But in theory, if we drop back down to around the nominal value that that varistor should be able to cope with, that should now be back to its original high value. We shouldn't have done any uh, permanent damage inside that device. So let's see what happens. There you go. Marvellous. So the device is doing its job. When it's at around nominal voltage, we've got a very, very high resistance. And then when we go beyond that up to higher values, we can see that the resistance of the device drops. Current's allowed to flow down to earth for that brief period of time. Thank you, Joe. So that experiment worked wonderfully for the varista. Can mm -hmm. we do the same for the gas discharge tube, please, Joe? Absolutely. So we'll unclip those from there. Obviously, we're not passing any voltage across this at the moment. What we'll now do is we'll clip onto the terminals for the gas discharge tube technology. And obviously, this is the neutral to earth connection. So we'll have a look at what we've got going on here. Set to 250 volts. Let's apply it. Now, again, when we hit the test button, we'd expect to get a really high resistance reading. We would, Joe. So we're somewhere near nominal voltage. Obviously, this is DC, not AC, but it's a similar principle. We've got a very, very high uh, resistance there. Okay, then, Joe, let's move it up then to 500 volts and see if we okay. can get the same reaction we got previously. Yep, so once again, we're above the nominal voltage values. Now that's interesting in this case, because this is slightly different technology, so we're using a gas discharge tube instead of the varista, you can see there that actually we've still got uh, a very, very high reading, even though we've gone above the nominal voltage. Now again, this is not a perfect illustration because we're using DC and not AC, but let's see what happens when we do get to a very, very high voltage and see what happens there. So we'll check to see what's going on at 1000 volts. And again, you can see there, it's not a stable value because again, it's different technology, but you can see there that we are getting a lower resistance. It's sort of rising and falling a little bit. So we can see that it's changing there. So once again, we can see the technology is working. We've got uh, a reduced resistance there, even though it wasn't nice and stable like the Varista. But again, if we go back to 250 vo uh, volts being applied here, we should see that this just goes back to its normal value. Yep, you can see there that the uh, component has not become uh, permanently damaged by that higher uh, voltage that we applied to it. Thank you, Joe. See, see you for your next, next defix. defix.